took away my parents. They took away my identity. They took away my siblings. And I says, they're not going to take my soul. Oh, my God. After 52 years, it's just as if it were yesterday. There is one thing that has puzzled me and has puzzled the world. The Germans dedicated manpower and energy towards the destruction of the Jews to the last day. But it was more important to them to kill the Jews than even winning the war. But James, it's, it's so good to see you again, even though it's been a couple decades. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, yeah, thank and, the, you. and the last days, I mean, just what an iconic film. And uh, to speak to you on, on this occasion for the remastered event. And it's the last days is such, recounts one of the darkest chapters in human history, but introducing the film to new audiences, it could not be more urgent than in today's troubled times, correct? Yeah, I mean, that's what I was thinking back when we made the film in 1998. And um, so, yeah, it, it even, I, you know, I remember thinking back then, uh, we've come a long way since the Holocaust. And, yeah, we've gotten this out of our way as, as human beings, and it can never happen again. And now here we are, it's 20 something years later, and my perspective on that has changed a little. And now the film is coming out and it has a little bit of a different sort of urgent message for a different time. So it's really interesting the way time works. Yeah, Anti-Semitism is on the rise again in, in Hungary and worldwide. And, you know, the movie provides a powerful context, you know, more than ever. You know, I, I recommend it all the time when I see uh, such things, it, the news, it's almost like I can't watch the news anymore. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I totally agree. And, I'll, and it's going to be interesting to see the reactions to the film. Um, I mean, it did get an international distribution back then, but you know, with Netflix and uh, the far wide reach of, of Netflix, it's going to be reaching a much bigger audience than it ever did, even when it was first released. In you know, it's being dubbed into thirty-three languages, so or translated into thirty-three languages. So it'll be interesting to see what the uh, international response is. Oh, absolutely, to the matter. Yeah. And it's important to get it to young people because. Not only they're Holocaust deniers, but just it's amazing how they don't know their history, you know, especially something like the Holocaust. You know, I run into young people all the time, and not that it comes up, but when it doesn't, in terms of what I'm recommending a World War II film or something, they have no idea what I'm talking about. So it's important for a movie like yours, just like sit down, here it is, and, and look what must never happen again. Do you find that they, they want to know? Uh, what it's they're they're kind of confused about it, but once you start a film, and at the end, they're just they're changed forever as they should be. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that this this film has is sort of accessible in that it's not really about the history of the war, the history of the Holocaust. It's it's really a it's very personal. It's five personal stories about what 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 the five main characters lived through, and how their lives sort of interweave since they all were sort of at the same place at the same time, but very different types of experiences. Well, that's what's so I'm hoping important. that it has that yeah. accessibility about it. That's what's important because if it was just facts and being in a history class, they wouldn't connect to it. But when you make it personal, it just, it changes everybody. It really does. And uh, also the last days it was remastered this time around for the original 35 millimeter negative And you personally supervise that? Tell me about that oh, yeah. process. How does that work? Well, we were talking about the film having a re-release. Um, it, it being very timely and the Shoah Foundation, which is still going strong, which is the, the whole project stemmed from the Shoah Foundation back in the 90s, um, was talking about let's let's do a remastering. And we had shot this film on 35 millimeter film, which is really unusual for a documentary at any time, really. But certainly today, you don't shoot a documentary on film. And uh, so we had that element. And so we went back to the original negative. And, and scan the film. So it was, it was interesting to see. I'd seen the film, of course, so many times over the years. And now it's, I can see details that I just didn't ever see before. So it's, it's great to see it sort of living up to its potential on its production value as well. And the re-release is uh, also time with the, commemorates the 75th anniversary, the deportation of 440,000 Jews from Hungary to, from May 15th to July 4th, 1944. No, oh, you've got good statistics in front of you. You're good, good researchers. <laughs> it's too early to memorize them. <laughs> it's too early. <laughs> I hear you. 
<laughs> it's so uh, it's it just has such more meaning than ever and you know i'm adopted my entire family my brother and my sister we were all adopted at birth and so i never knew my my origin you know my history of my uh background and two years ago my family did that 23 and me and uh, -huh. uh for christmas and it came back uh, let's see if i say this right ash ashkenazi uh -huh. So I was Ashkenazi and Italian. So I'm, I'm an Eastern European Jew. I mean, like 80% it came back. Wow. <laughs> and I does was that, just, Does that affect your perception of your well, own history, especially when you learn about things like the Holocaust? Oh, oh, well, absolutely. Because, you know, I grew up Protestant, you know, we grew up Assembly of God and uh, my neighbors were Jewish when I was growing up in junior high and high school. And I was just drawn to them, the, you know, the Gilmans. For some reason, I was just always fascinated. I felt comfortable around them. And uh, now it's just when I learned that my background and I watched this again recently, you know, for our interview today, I'm just, you know, I need to call Henry Louis Gates the third and just say, you know, I'm just, I'm just so curious about my background, you know, because, you know, reading about, the, about their, uh, their plight, it's just, I know I have some sort of, you know, interesting family history on my side. Yeah. Oh, it's really, that's interesting. What an so, what a interesting thing to go through. Yeah. You know, so we have that. Um, yeah. I grew up Catholic. Um, so I didn't have any direct connection to the Holocaust, you know, either. And it was um, just through my work with Steven Spielberg and launching the Shoah Foundation, that, which was, you know, set up to interview Holocaust survivors all over the world in all different languages. Um, it was sort of that connection that I started to feel like, wow, this, they feel like my grandparents, you know, I definitely feel, feel this connection and, and wanted to become a, you know, a part of helping uh, tell this story. Um, so yeah, there's a whole long, there's a whole long backstory there too, which I won't tell you, <laughs> but, but yeah, it's interesting how we can grow up with one set of ideas and perceptions and, uh, you know, and just continue to learn and grow as we get older. Yeah. And, you know, over my career, I've interviewed Steven Spielberg many times, and it's just been always the most incredible experiences. I don't have the relationship, obviously, that you have with him, but, you know, when you came for this remastering of the last days, what, you know, was it interesting to reconnect with him and, um, well, he didn't get involved with the remastering other than to say, this is super cool, let's do this. And so it'll be great. He was excited that the film was gonna ha be seen again and have another life um, because it is it, you know, an interesting time in the world right now. And uh, you know, the film has a particular resonance today that it didn't have when it came out. But, uh, but other than that, no, I've loved all of my work with Steven. Uh, he's, he's very, uh, very smart, he's very tapped into the world of, the entertainment and audiences and what audiences uh, react to and respond to. And that also came with the historical um, work. When we started the Shoah Foundation, and then even when I made The Last Days, he said it was really important that we focus on the pre-war experiences as well, not just what happened during the Holocaust and what happened after the Holocaust and how a lot of these survivors were able to rebuild their lives. You know, even against certain some people that would have that did criticize us and say, "Aren't you trying to put a positive spin on the Holocaust by showing, you know, the happiness that these people had in their lives after the war?" It's like, well, that's you know, to not show that would be to deny them their their story, and their story includes um, emerging from the Holocaust and rebuilding their lives and and having families and children and grandchildren. And the it's tremendous tribute. happiness that goes with that. Yeah, it's a tribute to their strength. I mean, they're not, you know, living their lives or trying to. I thought that was a, important to show that they moved on, but that it was still part of them. So, absolutely, yeah. and that was something that you know that, that was Stephen's uh, vision up front for the you know all of the interviews that we did for the Show Foundation, but also for this film. Well, James, thank you so much for joining me today. Congratulations on uh, just an incredible movie. It's uh, reconnecting with it many years later, available on DVD and Blu-ray, and of course on Netflix, which I think is gonna be just an amazing uh, outreach to everyone worldwide. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Good to see you. Um,